Hello, I'm Georgia Shakti Hill. I'd like to welcome you to Living in Balance. Our program is about the power of sound. We will do enhancing activities that will help us embrace the divine and take us back to that childlike essence that we truly are. Come join us. Christopher Timms is a teacher of the power of sound. Through sound energy dynamics, he has traveled and he has taught for the last 12 years. We are so pleased to have him with us today. Welcome. Thanks for having me. So sound energy dynamics. Sound energy dynamics is the name of a technique that I've been teaching that has to do with the use of sound in the form of tuning forks specifically. And the tuning forks are applied to the body, much like you would tune up a musical instrument. And you said you actually look at our bodies as if they were musical instruments. It's true. And uh, we can be out of tune. Most of us are out of tune. Um, at the essence of our being, we're always perfectly in tune. It is through our own attachments and our emotional entanglements, things like this, that uh, block and restrict the flow of life force through the body. And that's where we get out of tune. And so our environment, those issues that we're dealing with on a regular basis, those things that are just happening in our lives can take us out of balance. It's true. And literally, um, our vibration then is changed. Because your experience is the vibration. Uh -huh. Now, do you work with the chakras? Yes. The chakras are, the way I see chakras, I've been able to see energy since I've been a little boy. Um, the chakras appear to me as clear crystalline globes that radiate, much like our sun, radiates spherical pulses, harmonics. And as these chakras are pristine and clear, they offer no resistance to that light. There's no, you could say, distortion. Uh -huh. But as we accumulate our attachments or go through our pains and pleasures, all the different things that we experience, we tend to accumulate what the Eastern mystics would call mandalas, patterns that form like dust over these chakras and then refract that light, much like a prism refracts sunlight and gives us our world as we experience it out here. And speaking of the mystics of the East, you have studied um, mysticism, you have studied um, especially the Tibetan Buddhism. The Tibetan teachings, yes. Okay, and there so much is about the chanting because of the vibration, mm -hmm. and um, the Tibetan bell, the Tibetan bowl, uh, the Ting Sha, it just goes on and on, because there really is power in sound. It seems that the theme that binds all the world's religions together beyond their, or behind their dogmas or their rules and their ideas is vibration. You know, in the West, the Bible from the West says that in the beginning there was the word. And in the East, you have the primordial sound Yes. You know, the uh, sound current, the shabd, the bani, the music of the spheres, these are all names for that primordial essence, uh -huh. the Big Bang, you could say. Mm -hmm. And that's quite a sound. Well, I liked your enhancing activities, and we made reference to those. Mm -hmm. And this is to open and expand our awareness. And before people come to you in workshops, you like them to do like a little bit of sort of personal cleansing or clearing or detoxifying. Tell I us about those things. I think a good idea. Okay. Uh, um, before I would go to yoga class as a, as a young boy or martial arts, I would prepare myself. I'd be warmed up and stretched, and i put the things of the day aside to just be present. But most people as adults don't think about that when they go to work. They uh -huh. take their stuff with them from their homes and their private lives. So let's transpose that into the realm of workshops and teachings where if you're going to get the most out of me, you can. If I'm a resource that you want to get the most out of, wouldn't it be to your advantage to be emotionally empty, mentally clear, not have your memories bantering at you? Well, let's start with enhancing activities. I like the physical exercise. You did mention that. And you said we should walk an hour a day. At least. I like that. At least. Yeah. Uh, the mystical traditions, again, have all a common thread of physical activity in them. 
uh, perhaps one of the closest affiliations I have would be the Shaolin traditions in China with my relatedness in Kung Fu and health and vitality. They built the monasteries themselves, they grew all their own food, not to mention their own exercise with Kung Fu and Tai Chi and Qigong. We're always talking about mind, body and spirit, so the body part, we really have to take care of that, do we That's not? That's true, and, and most people as they get into metaphysics that I've noticed in my experience, uh, tend to put that on the back burner because they're so excited emotionally about new ideas and new ways of looking at life that they forget that they have a physical body that goes along for the journey. And about that emotional clearing, how does one clear all that emotion that gets built up from all those things that happen to us in our lives? Well, there seems to be two ways that people look at doing it, a linear or a nonlinear way of doing this. In the linear way, which is what most of psychology and most of the religions teach us, we're taught that we must uh, go through disciplines, austerities, through analysis to find out what is the cause of this, to learn our lessons from this, so then we can move forward from this. Psychology 101? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And what I've found is that the more we feed something, the more it grows. So the more you try to analyze something, it becomes like the tiger chasing his tail. Uh -huh. You know, the more you want to find out about that tail, the more you, you're chasing it, the more you just go around and around and around, which is, of course, transposed into the wheel of life, birth, death, and rebirth. So the idea is if you want to get off the wheel of life, if you want to get that emotional clearing that we're really looking for, the other spiritual path, the nonlinear path, is what's called tantra. There's no discipline beyond lesson learning and process. There is the idea of embracing the divine, embracing the perfection, the all that you are right now. And I love that. That can be the instant oh, yeah, rather just than acceptance. the years. Just the acceptance. <laughs> I like the faster approach. Me too. Now you use the terminology in enhancing activities of memory detoxification. Okay. That's getting rid of all that old stuff that mm -hmm. is, the past is over. And it's our association because we think we are our past. You know, and to be in the present moment is to be free of all of that, isn't it? Oh, yes. You know, to be empty of all that you thought you once were, all that you thought you understood, all your great knowledge and wisdom, to be truly childlike and present in this moment is to see all the endless possibilities that life has for you today. Yes. And then we move to mental clearing. And how is that different? It's similar in that our culture tends to be particularly mental. We're very mental. And particularly as a man, I grew up in a world full of men who are very mental and tend to deny feelings and want to put all that aside. So people are ruled by the mind. And the key signature for me to help people free themselves from the mind is to relinquish our need to be right and to relinquish our need to be in control. Mm -hmm. Now, again, that's just the opposite of what a lot of psychological teachings and, and traditions will tell you is that there is a righteous way and that there is a need to be in control of the body, of the mind, of all of these things. And to me, I want to unlearn all of that and just be natural. Because for me, success in the spiritual life has to do with being natural. But it's kind of interesting that we do have to start with the mind first because yes. we can control it and go through these things that will help clear it. Mm -hmm. Okay, And then we can go back to the surrendering, to the letting go, to the natural. Sure. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. And then there is an unconscious clearing. And that would be a little tricky then, would it not? As you have been able to honestly embrace your body, your emotions, your mind, your memories, then the unconscious tends to spill. That distinction, that thin membrane, you could say, between the unconscious and the conscious begins to dissolve away, as all life is one anyway. Yes. And as those unfulfilled wants, desires, those primary needs for safety and security, as they spill into your conscious mind, you have to have the courage to just let them all go, let it all go. So these are the things that people should be doing in preparation for your workshops or just for life? Just for life. It's just a great <laughs> just, recipe for just everybody. Just let it go, absolutely. Yes. But also like the physical activity that is so good for us and things too. And what your purpose as you are traveling and you are teaching, what is it that your message is? What's that underlying message that you want to share always? you are whole and you are complete right now, that there is no lesson, there is no process that you have to go through in order for you to experience freedom, liberation, in order for you to embrace the divine. All you have to do is develop that curiosity that would overwhelm 
the safety of what you know. That's that childlike part. Mm -hmm. I like that. We have here the blue hue, which is the order of the blue star. It is um, the next wave of light and sound teachings, and that's something that you're sharing as you travel too, is that's it not? That's true. That's yeah. true. The essence of inner light and inner sound, the Shabd, the Bani, the living word, as, the, as it is the golden thread that seems to tie together all the religions, I have expressed that essence, that inner light, that inner sound in all the lectures and workshops that I do, whether it's nutrition, diet, exercise, relationships, or sound work. Uh -huh. And with that, um, you have developed a movement that we're going to be seeing in the second mm. segment that is called Zifa Gong? Yes, that's correct. The way of the relaxed spirit. Okay. And <laughs> that is part of what you're teaching, too, the way of the relaxed spirit, because that, again, gets you back to the essence of who you are. That natural, childlike state. And embracing the divine mm -hmm. becomes more simplistic in that Very good. way. Yes, I like that. Okay, so what we will do then, if you will stay tuned, we will be back with Christopher Thames, and we will be talking about the power of sound. talking to Christopher Timms and the topic is the power of sound and having traveled with the Dalai Lama um, as we said it is the Tibetan tradition of working with sound that helps bring us to balance and we have a couple of the goodies that you have and this is would you like to tell us what this one is that's a beautiful Tibetan bell it's very unusual in that it has a higher content of silver than uh -huh. most of the bells do. Uh -huh. That was gifted to me by one of my students in Toronto, Canada. It's and, beautiful. Uh, the bell, it has two portions to it. The top uh -huh. is the mind, and this is the body. And then the other part of the bell, which is over there on the table, is called the, the spirit, or the dorji. Oh, oh, okay. So we had mind, body, and now this is the part that represents spirit. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. This is beautiful. Isn't and, that wonderful? Yeah, and as you said, it has a um, high silver content. Mm -hmm. okay. And that is unlike any other bell that I've ever seen. I've played with hundreds and hundreds of these bells, and I don't know how that one ever came about. Well, it's Christopher, very what about you and sound? You said music was your background? You've always been a musician? I started playing the violin when I was six and the drums when I was ten. And I think they formed a cocoon through which I was able to keep a lot of the sensitivities that we all have as children. Yes. Oh, yeah, and you know, I always feel so much better, it, whether it is singing or chanting or drumming, it mm -hmm. just brings us back to balance almost it does. automatically, doesn't it? Does. It does. It's a way of just expressing ourselves naturally. Yes. Well, you have done a movement that is called Zi Fa Gong, which is your own version of a meditation in motion, mm -hmm. and we're going to watch you do this, and um, it has both your chanting, and we're also going to be listening to your CD in the background. So Correct. tell us what we're going to see now. You said it's rather intuitive? Yes. Each person has their own song, and each person has their own movements. And these movements may vary from day to day with your practice, because your body will express what it wants to in order to promote balance and harmony, strength, and vitality. OK, so we're going to see Christopher Timms and his own personal movement. That's right. Yeah.
and you do highly recommend that each person find their own sort of individual movement like that and so yours would vary just depending on how you felt and what I'm experiencing that day if I'm grumpy or if I'm sleepy but that toning that you're doing that sound you sound like a musical instrument mm -hmm, that's true <laughs> yeah. you can play two or three notes at the same time uh -huh. One of the benefits of being able to open up the body like that, the sinus passages and things to create the overtones and harmonics is that the, technically speaking, the interference patterns that are created stimulate all the glands in the body yes. and break up a lot of the um, atrophy and laziness that the glands develop as we grow older. And the underlying sound is what is from your CD. Yes. And so we were listening to that, but we were also hearing you mm -hmm. in addition to the blue hue. So you um, have laid down that track, and it then is something that other people could use in a similar way. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh -huh. People enjoy that as a foundation for their chanting, for their toning work. Yeah. One of the things that you teach is the golden thread um, of the teaching of the masters. Mm -hmm. And I like that. And what is that golden thread? If there is a oneness, what Einstein would call the unified field, which is everything, everywhere. We're all a part of this, and we're an inseparable organism called life. We think that we're separate. And one of the real tragedies over the last age is that we think that we're so separate that we think that you have your own processes, your own missions, your own karma, your own sin, and all of that. when we're all just cells in the cosmic body of life. It's our, our beingness is way beyond all of those things. And that's spoken of as a main theme of all the religions of the world, and yet it's, it tends to be obscured by our own sense of pain. Yes, okay. So there is that thread then that goes throughout all of the teachings of the masters. Yes. Okay. Let's talk a little bit more about, about this power of sound and balance mm -hmm. that you use in your life. One of the things um, that you talked about in addition to the physical exercise of the body is that you are a vegetarian, but you defined it as that of Hippocrates. Um, Hippocrates is the name of a wonderful health institute that is is a proponent of a primarily live foods way of, of taking in nutrition where I don't over process many things. But what I found, I've been a vegetarian for 22 years, uh -huh. is that I form a foundation, a main theme out of being totally vegetarian. I don't eat any flesh of any kind. But if I want to eat a piece of pizza, I'll eat a cheap piece of cheese pizza. And when I go home, I'll certainly have a piece of my mom's lemon meringue pie. Uh -huh. There, those things are not going to hurt me in any way. <laughs> so it's not what you do every once in a while, it's what you do every day. And the vibration is believed to be raised with the less eating of flesh, as you would put it's it. It's true. Okay. And so again, we're talking about us as this tuned musical instrument, and that's one more technique that we can then raise our personal vibration. And are we less apt to be out of balance then? When you begin to remove processed foods and flesh from your diet, you also tend to be less emotionally erratic, less mentally unclear. Uh -huh. You tend to be more present, more open-minded. And you uh, talk also and teach also of the sacred geometry. How does that tie in with all of this? That's, power of that's sound? a really fun tie-in for people to get because most people, when they do yoga, when they do their yoga practices, they just think that they're becoming like Gumby. You know, they're just stretching and doing all the contortions and the breathing things, and it feels good, and that's the end of it. But every yoga posture, when done properly, expresses a specific antenna, you could say, that transmits and receives light. It's all part of what's called sacred geometry, is our relationship to the universe through geometry and form. And every sound is expressed through geometry as well. So with every Tai Chi movement, with every Kata, with every martial arts, or with every yoga posturing, you're all, you're expressing sound as well as light for those who can hear and see such things. <laughs> and as you had said, you have been doing this for years and years, and now there is a real movement toward vibrational therapies, having an understanding 
of the ways that it is affecting it's and true. healing our bodies. You said crystal healing is such a vast topic that it would be difficult, but people um, don't have an understanding sometimes of the power of the vibration within crystals too. That's true. How, does, how is that one more factor that helps in the power of sound? Crystals are, are a tremendous spiritual tool in that they tend to be amplifiers. So many times within our spiritual practice, we can hide from ourselves. Even though you do your meditation, your prayer, your affirmation, you can still hide from yourself. But a crystal, being a, an amplifier, will help expose you. Oh. And it, it's what would be called a tantra, an embrace. Oh. So as this is exposed, it doesn't matter what you're doing, what matters is the physics. And the physics is that now this amplifies you so you're more exaggerated. Oh. And one last thing that you also talk about in your lectures is ascension. And we've been talking about that and hearing more about that all the time. What, how would you define ascension and how do you teach it? And we have about a minute for you to tell us okay. that. Okay. <laughs> Most people use the word ascension as a way of phrasing escape. They want to get off the planet. For me, the word ascension means moving my reference point where I associate myself away from all the lower bodies of mind, emotion, and memory into the eternal, the divine. And then here on this earth, I'm here to bring heaven to earth. So for me, ascension is bringing the divine here each day, whether I'm at the gym, whether I'm driving, whether I'm being here with you or with my family. So you're not leaving. No. <laughs> Where is there to go that I'm really not already present if all life is one? Okay. And you're just bringing yourself into that embracing the divine again, that childlike essence that you are. And there are so many ways to do that, but all of them you can assist with the power of sound. This is true. Ah. Well, I appreciate your having shared with us today, Christopher Tamps. Thank you for having me. Okay. If you would like to be in touch with Christopher, and we always love to hear from you, just stay tuned and you'll see how. I just love all the ways that we can learn to live in balance. The power of sound is really one of those things that really can help us on an ongoing basis in so many ways, and that's what we have shared with you today. Until next time, I'm Georgia Shakti Hill. May you be well, happy, and peaceful.